evening, sisters and brothers in Christ. Welcome to our evening devotions here at Incarnation Lutheran Church. We have these devotions every evening from Monday through Saturday at 7 p.m., and we invite you to be with us. They, they're uh, on the YouTube platform, but they appear on our website, godamong.us, G-O-D-A-M-O-N-G.us. And there are also links that can be found on Facebook, on uh, all the different media, social media sites, Twitter and so forth. So wherever you are, wherever you look on social media, you can find us if you look. And we invite you to be part of this. We have worship at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings, and you are invited to uh, participate in a time of uh, spiritual uplifting and, and, and teaching so that um, we might be a blessing to one another. Because our goal, even in the face of the difficulties that we have, is to be church in the face of a closed building. We are the church, and we are uh, together in what it is that we're going through at this moment in time. Additionally, we have um, Bible readings and prayer that go out first thing in the morning, 6 a.m. in your email. Um, you have to be on our, on our uh, mailing list in order to receive that. And if you believe that you should be on the mailing list, please check your spam, your, your junk mail folder, because sometimes uh, large uh, subscription type mailings like this get redirected into spam. So. You may be getting it and just not knowing it. And if you're not, if we don't have the correct information for you, you'll be getting a mailing in the next week or so uh, where we're trying to correct our database. What we've discovered, one of the blessings of, of this time of isolation is we've discovered our database is messed up and we are now in the process of fixing it. So look for that mailing and, and offer the correct information when you get it. Uh, beyond that, we have Bible studies. We have Zoom meetings of all sorts. There, there's information on the website that will direct you to where those things are, things that might be of interest to you. So we want to invite you and tell you and uh, help you to know that you're absolutely welcome in all of these things. The, the more that we have in this conversation, the more that we have in this life of love for one another, man, oh man, the better we are. And, and I, I really look forward to hearing from you. We've had so many uh, emails and letters from people that have been disconnected from us for some reason or other. Perhaps they've moved away. Letters from people in other countries who appreciate what it is that we're proclaiming with God's word or understanding and feeling filled and fulfilled by God's word. So uh, let's, let's be in this together. So stay with us in our devotions and in our worship and in our prayer. Uh, for today's devotion, I have to tell you that it, it's, it's taken me some time to figure out what I want to do. Not because I don't have ideas, because you know that I'm a, I babble. I, I have no trouble talking. I can always find things to talk about. I, I, I don't just talk off the cuff, but I have um, a you know, repository of things that I can draw upon to make reflections biblically and otherwise, and it's not typically difficult for me to do so. But when you follow a devotion that is absolutely brilliant, it's hard to come up with something that's meaningful. Last evening, we had the privilege of hearing Deacon Mindy's devotion based on uh, Matthew's gospel, where, where Jesus talked about the love of God and love of one's neighbor. And she posited that unless we have love of one's neighbor, we can't possibly love God. We need to hear that story. We need to hear the powerful message she has. So if you didn't hear what Deacon Mindy said last night for the May 27th evening devotion, I encourage you to go to our website and look it up. It's absolutely worth listening to. Not only because it made my work tonight difficult, but because it's powerful. Um, and you will not help but feel convicted because it speaks to how difficult this whole piece of love is. If, in fact, in real life, in real terms, we are not showing love to all of God's children, but are living selectively on the basis of our race or on the basis of some artificial connection that we don't have. Now, why is that? Um, one of the things that, that I said to Deacon Mindy is she may get some pushback because part of what, what she was saying to us is that if we truly love God, we've got to love our neighbors. If we truly want to demonstrate or manifest our love for God, it has to be done in the context of our love for our sisters and brothers all around us, all of them, not selectively, the lot of them, whoever they are, wherever they come from, whatever they look like, tall, short, thin, not so thin, whatever they look like, whoever they are, they must be loved. And if they're not loved, then one wonders, is it even possible for us to have the love that God wants us to have? I began, therefore, to think about this whole notion of love because it's a tough one. And what does it actually mean? Most people who get offended by the notion of 
not being as open-minded as they think they are. Most people who get offended by the thought that they belong to a grouping that might have some biased opinions at its base, they're offended because of this notion of love. They believe that they love and they love expansively and they love well. So I thought I'd talk about the word love and um, share with you a passage from the first letter of St. John, chapter 4, verses 7 through 21, where the brilliant proclamation is made finally in Scripture, the short, the concise, but the absolutely brilliant proclamation that says simply, God is love. So I invite you to follow along. This is 1 John, chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. My beloved friends, let us continue to love each other since love comes from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and experiences a relationship with God. The person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God, because God is love. So you can't know him if you don't love. This is how God showed his love for us. God sent his son into the world so that we might live through him. This is the kind of love we are talking about, not that we once upon a time loved God, but that he loved us and sent a son, sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage that we've done to our relationship with God. My dear, dear friends, if God loved us like this, we certainly ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, ever. But if we love each other, God dwells deeply within us, and his love becomes complete in us, perfect love. This is how we know we're living steadily and deeply in him and he in us. He's given us his life. He's given us life, excuse me, from his life, from his very own spirit. Also, we've seen for ourselves and continue to state openly that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Everyone who confesses that Jesus is God's Son participates continually in an intimate relationship with God. We know it so well, we've embraced it heart and soul, this love comes from God. God is love. When we take up permanent residence in a life of love, we live in God and God lives in us. This way, love has the run of a house, becomes at home and mature in us so that we're free, on, free of worry on Judgment Day. Our standing in the world is identical with Christ's. There is room in love for fear. Or rather, there is no room in love for fear. Well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, fear of death, fear of judgment, is one not fully yet formed in love. We, though, are going to love. Love and be loved. First we were loved, now we love. He loved us first. If anyone boasts, I love God, and goes right on hating his brother or sister, thinking nothing of it, he's a liar. If he won't love the person he can see, how can he love the God he can't see? The command we have from Christ is blunt. Loving God includes loving people. You've got to love both. That's a lot of love. In fact, um, that word love in the Greek is used in the 15 verses that I've just read to you is used no fewer than 27 times that word or forms of that word. And the word that's used here is agape, the, the type of love that, it, that only God is truly capable of. It's that uh, self-sacrificial giving of oneself, creative kind of love that we find in God that we ourselves are decidedly incapable of. But the love that we are called upon to emulate is God's love. The difficulty we have is that our love, human love, is different. Martin Luther in the Heidelberg Disputation, which is, took place in, I think it was April the 28th in um, 1518, so 502 years ago. In that disputation, Martin Luther makes a distinction between two kinds of love, God's love and human love. God's love is the kind of love that is creative, that create that that is directed towards nothing and out of nothing creates something, creates something that is loved. He he his love creates love. And it's a it's a kind of thing that we we can't even wrap our arms around. But human love, on the other hand, has as its object something that we perceive to be beautiful, something that we perceive to be glorious, something that we perceive to be loveable. Um, 
And so we make judgments about other people, we make judgments about other things based upon those things that we perceive. And therefore, when we hear a passage like this that says to us that we must love, we say we do love. But the fallacy therein, brothers and sisters, is that we love on the basis of that which we perceive to be loving. We don't often love with God's love. God's love loves without question. It loves without exception. It loves beyond measure. It loves sacrificing entirely oneself for the object of that love for us. God's love for us is so great that God gave God's self for us in Christ Jesus. That is the kind of love that we are to have. That is what is a barrier for us when we try to wrap our arms around why it is there are all the different phobias in the world, why it is that we have a hard time embracing people from other ethnicities, why we have a hard time embracing, and, and all ethnicities have the same issues one with the other, why we have a hard time accepting people who to us, who seem to us to be different from us. We're embarking on a wonderful journey here, despite the fact that we're in the midst of a very difficult time, we're embarking on a journey of self-discovery figuring out how it is that we as a community can be God's people in the world, how it is that we can love absolutely inclusively all of God's children. And it's a challenge because the love with which we are to love is agape, God's love, that creative, beautiful, wonderful love that brings us together, that makes us together, that puts us indeed in relationship with God. For only in loving, with this sort of love, can we claim to love God. Brothers and sisters, do look at Deacon Mindy's devotion because it is wonderful. And think about what it means to you. And when she talks to you about love, know that what she's talking about is that kind of love that's a bit of a trick for us, that's a bit of a challenge for us, that's not always intuitive or easy for us. Our conceptions of love are simplistic and based upon that which we like. This kind of love has nothing to do with that which we like. It loves because we are part of the God who loves, the God who is love. Love one another, brothers and sisters. If God loved us, we ought to love each other. Love one another with God's love, that all-encompassing, wonderful experience of acceptance of all people, irrespective of differences, differences of education, differences of culture, differences of ethnicity, differences of language, differences of any sort at all are absolutely, fundamentally irrelevant. We're called upon to love, to love all God's children, for these are people for whom God died, and they are our sisters and brothers. You are sisters and brothers to one another. So love as Jesus has loved you. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer, won't we? Gracious Lord, the gift of love is, is a mouthful. It's hard for us to understand. And it makes us enter into denial about not being loving. Because we know that we love the people that we love, and we love them well, as the Pharisees once said. Help us to manifest the kind of love that you want us to show one for the other. Help us to manifest the kind of love that is not directed towards a particular object because we find it attractive or interesting, but we love it because it's an object, it's a person, it's a thing, it's a being for whom you died, whom you created in love. Help that be our kind of love, Lord. Help us to learn what that kind of love means. Grant us grace and strength. Be the loving people that you'd have us be so that in all things and in all ways, we emulate what you'd have us emulate, so that we are the people of agape, people of your kind of love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us, and I hope that we'll see you tomorrow. Remember, we have worship at 10 a.m., and do look for the Bible reading and prayers in your, in your email. And uh, if you can't find it there, let us know what your address is, and we'll get that corrected, and it may well be in your spam, so check there as well. So good night, everybody.